So it's nearing the end of the school semester, and if there's one thing I can count on at this time every year, it's that my mind will become completely fixated on some awesome thing I need to be doing that's not school. This year it's miniatures. You know, like what George Lucas used in 1976 to film the original Star Wars action sequences. There's something so magical and captivating to me personally about building something the size of your palm and then shooting it in a way that it comes to life on screen. Or, quite possibly, it's just a way to cope with exams by distracting my brain with busy work so I can't think about them. Either way, at this point, I can't stop the train. It's clear I'm doing this, and I have a lot of what I need. I have concept art, half of a spaceship modeled, and an HD camera. But I'm missing one crucial puzzle piece. Motion control. Now what you see on screen right now is a motion control rig. It achieves super smooth, hyper repeatable motion. And nowadays the technology has evolved far enough that it can be integrated right into a camera slider, making it widely available for amateur filmmakers around the world. Who have $2,000 which I don't. And as an engineer in training, this begs the question, can I build a motion control rig that performs comparably to those in the industry for next to nothing in my basement? I genuinely don't know if this is possible. Listen, when I started on this a week ago, I knew the ensuing build would be interesting, but nothing could have prepared me for the fun, the frustration, and the incredible learning experience that was about to take place. So I set out with my two guidelines driving every design choice. The holy grail of motion control. Ultra smooth motion and ultra repeatability. As a secondary goal, I wanted to play into my own hand as much as possible. Utilizing tools, components, and resources that I already had on hand or readily available. By far the most impactful of these advantages, as you might have guessed, was 3D printing, which came through for me in two distinct ways over the course of this project. Not only did I use 3D printing as my primary manufacturing method, I harvested several parts of an old 3D printer to help achieve that ultra smooth motion. All of the green 3D printed parts that you see in this build were made from Matter Hacker's Pro Series PLA, which they graciously sent me for free directly preceding my two-year break from YouTube. I'd highly recommend you pick up some for your next project. The link for that will be below. And thank you again for Matter Hackers for sending me that for free. Despite its awesome benefits, 3D printing has some distinct drawbacks. So I knew I'd need to utilize some store-bought and otherwise non-3D printed parts for this build. The most notable of these is the three-quarter inch copper tubing, which acts as the rails and overall structural component of this build, as well as the 19 skateboard bearings I used, which roll on that copper tube and create our ultra smooth motion. So with all that figured out, I fired up my favorite free design software, Fusion 360, and started whipping up a lovely slider design complete with two axes of motion. In just a couple of hours, the design was complete with everything accounted for, including a bomb awesome camera mount that I was, and still am, very excited for. More on that later. At the end of the first day working on this seemingly impossible project, I'd created a solid design that played to my strengths. And I was in high spirits, ready to start the 3D printing marathon that lay before me. I went to bed that night thinking that maybe, just maybe, this whole design would be flawless. And the entire process was going to go super smoothly. No. <laughs> The day I started building, I was feeling good. I had an entire workbench full of parts I'd 3D printed, extra components, and various tools. It felt like the start of a giant jigsaw puzzle. Except not the most boring activity in the entire world. Seriously, puzzle people, how do you do it? I started by cutting my copper tubing down to the correct length, fitting it into my end cap, and test fitting the bearings and threaded rod. Everything felt like it was going great. So I moved on to the carriage. And that is where the nightmare started. The first time the carriage broke was before the build process had even started. I was taking a look at it just after I'd finished printing it, and being the clumsy person I am, dropped it on the ground, causing one of the bearing plates to snap off. Now this was a bummer, especially considering I'd used the last of my Pro Series PLA to print that piece, but I didn't think much of it. It was a minor setback. My design would be fine. 
The next break came as a surprise. I had put the carriage together earlier that day and test fit it onto the copper tubing. I noticed a bit of play in the system, which was slightly concerning considering the fact that repeatable motion was one of my two primary goals for the project, but I was ready to be done for the day and I left the workshop feeling good. A little later that day, motivation struck me to attach the other end cap to the copper tubing so I could start installing motors and belts the next day. This was what I was most excited for and I wanted to rush the other parts of the project so I could get to that sooner. I'd already captured the end cap process once so I didn't even bother to turn the camera on. What could possibly happen that was worth capturing? In short, I made a crucial mistake when clamping the piece down and the entire assembly fell off the workbench carriage and all. The moment it hit the floor, the carriage fractured along the same line the first one had. This one was very frustrating. I'd now broken the biggest part in my entire assembly twice, and each time I had to reprint it, I lost 9 hours and over 100 grams of PLA filament. Had I not been as tired and frustrated as I was, I probably would have noticed the glaringly obvious truth at this point. My carriage had big design issues, and they needed to be addressed. Deep down, I think I knew it was a problem, but I couldn't bring myself to face it and fix the problem in that moment. So I logged onto my PC, made the wall that kept breaking a couple of millimeters wider, and headed off to bed for the night, leaving my new carriage to be printed overnight. I go to the shop to start working on the slider again, and I'm thinking to myself, okay, it's day five, I can do this. Thicker walls will help, I just have to be careful, and I can put this nightmare behind me. I go through the entire carriage build process once again, but this time, there's a bit of a hiccup. When I'd thickened the walls, my carriage had become too small for the spacers I'd 3D printed to fit correctly. And, rather than take the time to reprint them properly, I decided to take a shortcut and use two nuts on the inside of the carriage as spacers for each threaded rod. I built the carriage without too much trouble, mounted it on the copper tubing, and noticed way too much play in the system. Far more than last time. Now, to this day, I cannot tell you what caused the play in the system. But I thought to myself, maybe I just need to tighten everything down more. That should fix it. Once again, ill thought out. <sighs> I've wasted so much filament. Just another example of me doing something ill thought out. The truth is, I was tired, and despite my brain's best efforts, the stress of exams was creeping up on me. The fun of the project had been gradually worn down over days worth of setbacks and wasted time. Looking back, that's probably what caused the series of hasty, ill thought out decisions that sent this project careening sideways. Hindsight is 2020, and looking back, I should have taken a step back and a deep breath and thought this through long before I did. When the carriage cracked for the third time, I was at an all-time low point in the project. Five days in, with almost no progress to show for it. I had honestly thought that the project would be over by now, and I couldn't even achieve smooth motion, much less repeatability. I felt like a failure, which feels embarrassing to say now about such an insignificant project, but I did. I felt stupid to have thought that I could achieve this, so I shut off the lights and I left the workshop feeling done with the entire project. Sometimes you just have to take a big break from something and reset to see the actual scale of things. The truth is, this project was meant to be fun, and my level of frustration with it was disproportionate. After a day of shutdown, my brain switched back on, remembered it loved engineering, and said, I came back to the design with no hurry, no stress, and no frustration. Looking at it, it seemed obvious what the problem was. All of the load of the entire system had to be supported by two tiny walls. I didn't even have a beveled surface in there to reduce stress concentration. I spent a few quiet minutes deciding what the best course of action was and set to work, redesigning the carriage the way it should have been in the first place. I printed it out, brought it to the workshop, and started assembling it. Slowly carefully, making sure everything was in the right place and that I wasn't messing up. And when I finally connected my carriage to the rest of the assembly, it worked like a dream. Smooth motion. Yes. I really, really couldn't have been happier. Overjoyed to finally be working on something that wasn't the carriage, I installed the stepper motor and the gears, and to my surprise, my camera mount worked absolutely flawlessly. On the first try, it friction fit 
perfectly onto the large gear and integrated seamlessly with the tripod head I had designed it for. I was relieved that the carriage finally worked and proud of myself for creating a camera mount that didn't need revision. Look, what I created isn't perfect. It's not even great. The slider and the gear still have plenty of play, and that's going to make repeatability difficult to achieve. But I achieved smooth motion, and that's something that I can be proud of myself for. I'm honestly not sure what will be in the next video. I could fail horribly, but that's okay because I love the engineering process. I wouldn't trade in the frustration I felt throughout this build if I had the chance because I know I learned from it. I learned how to be a better engineer, how to take my time and make rational decisions. I learned that it's okay to take a break and come back even stronger. In the end, even the hardships are a blessing. And that's why I want to inspire as many people as possible to go make the thing that they've always wanted to make. Stop waiting for permission and go do it. Sure, you'll go through hard times, but they'll give you an appreciation for the victories, both big and small. And in the end, the thing I'm walking away most grateful for is that camera mount. That beautiful, beautiful camera mount that worked first try with no issues whatsoever. Are you s Hey guys, no pressure to subscribe if you don't want to, but if you did enjoy the video, I'd really appreciate it if you could just leave a like down below and maybe drop a comment if you have something to say. Catch you in the next one when we create smooth, repeatable motion.